The 9-11 attacks by al-Qaeda terrorists two decades ago ignited a wave of anti-Muslim sentiment across the country. Christian persecution in some parts of the world is, quote, close to meeting the international definition of genocide. My dream is that to see Muslims, Christians, Jews, and people of faith work together to create a compassionate neighborhood. I had no desire to work with Muslims. I, I just, I was raised in a bubble, and I thought all Muslims hated Christians. Sometimes in order for you or for a person to change the world, you have to take risk. When I became friends with Muslims, I just assumed everybody would be excited and everybody would jump in, especially imams. Not at all. Not at all. Many pastors got upset. What are you doing? You're humanizing the Muslims, the imams. You're making people feel comfortable with them. We lost hundreds of church members from our church. He took risk against Islamophobia and hate toward Muslims. But that's not happening to change his mind. Continue in this, uh, in this path of bringing people together. Jesus didn't have it easy. Moses didn't have it easy. Muhammad did not have it easy. Abraham did not have it easy. Why am I thinking that we're going to have it easy? I'm going to be honest with you. I have not worked with evangelical Christian before until I met Bob Roberts. I found a man who loved God. God was not just a theological construct. He was a personal entity to Majin. And I found the guy to be very genuine, and he went to work with Muslims. He went to change the world. And I'd met him uh, in Nepal, and we just had a blast walking together. From the Mount of Nepal to the Valley of Texas, that's where he started working with Christians and Muslims. We're gonna do three things. Get to know one another more, go back home, team up, visit one another, place of worship, get to know one another. And when you build that trust, then we have to have our hands on and serve people. And when we do so, then we can share the story, then the story can be multiplied. Our dream was just at first to get a few pastors and imams not to be afraid of one another. That was it. We didn't plan on having all these retreats that we've done in the U.S. and around the world. It was simply Bob and Majid coming together to get a few pastors imams from the U.S., a few pastors and imams from Pakistan to get along. And I see the difference. Imam trusts me, pastors trust him. We brought both trust together and we brought other people who do not know each other. They have not met each other and that's where the change have happened, through relationship. At the end of the retreat, by the third day, they were laughing, they were hanging out together, and simply they got to know one another as human beings. When the grassroots, when the pastor to, and the imam to trust one another, then we want, we want the community to get to know one another. We want their community to work together. And we accomplished that from the first retreat. Imam Majid is literally one of the best friends I have on the face of the earth. I love him no different from how I love a Christian. I'd rather hang out with him than most Christians I know. He's a lot of fun. When we go to a retreat around the world, they see us joking, you know, and teasing one another. By just seeing that relationship, it established a modern example to them that that how we should be. If the minorities can be persecuted anywhere and it's okay and, and the persecutors get away from it, then every religion is going to be threatened in part because some re every religion is a minority somewhere. No longer can we make the same mistakes that we've made before. This time it counts. We are standing with the Christians around the world. 
we have helped to rebuild two churches were destroyed. Here in America, we have seen a church coming to protect a mosque. Uh, one Friday at the mosque and, and white supremacists surrounded it with, with AR-15s and other weapons. The, the church members literally got between them and the mosque and created a ring and opened a path where the Muslims could go in and worship. What I have seen God have done through our retreat is to have a pastor standing up and says, today I have a lot to work on. It touched my heart. I think the future of the movement is incredible. There's about two billion Christians, 1.7 billion Muslims. Imagine if we get along. Just imagine in every corner of the world we get along. What kind of world will look like? That is a miracle. Changing hearts.